<laughs> Welcome to the Only Good Vibe Show, Sarah. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for asking. I think this is so wonderful. How, how's things over there? You guys doing okay? It's raining here. So as a, as a person in my mature state of uh, where I am, you feel the you feel the weather in all of your bones. <laughs> <laughs> where are you right now, Sarah? I'm in Trenton, New oh, okay. Jersey. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Nice the one. capital of New Jersey, which is why I named the um, arts and music ambassador for the capital really? city. Wow. Oh, no, no. Yeah, the very oh, first wow. one. <laughs> Uh -huh. Very first one. Wow. I, I was going to say as well, Sarah, if you don't like the rain, you might not want to come to Scotland because it doesn't really stop raining over here, does yes. it, John? <laughs> Very much a daily well, my thing. Clothes, I would have a reason not to iron my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wettest place in the world over here in Scotland. <laughs> Probably. Yes. What have you been getting up to, Sarah? How have you been keeping busy during these crazy, crazy times? Have you been keeping productive with music? Music has um, what I've been doing. I, I did an experiment with my band, who are wonderful, by the way. They're called the Trenton All-Stars. Right, right. And uh, when I needed to, you know, people have been requesting, this is kind of gloom, to sing at funerals. What right. I do is have my band, they work on the tracks with their electronic technical things. Yep. Send the tracks. I go to a clean, wiped out studio sing over the track and send it off. All right, wow. And that's how we've been working. Wow. Um, and we've been like, we've been putting together our um, list for the upcoming shows that we're planning. Although right. we have no right. dates, all of them were canceled. Every last one of them. I was booked all the way up until um, May of this year. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know. Yep. <laughs> the last said about that. <laughs> But the music still lives in my heart because I'm still writing Brilliant. lyrics. I'm putting things down on my iPad, mm -hmm. transferring it to my iPhone, and then bouncing it back to my iPad. So <laughs> I found a way to get that together and to send it to my my guys and yeah. see what they think, you know. Technology, um, technology is amazing, I think, isn't it? <laughs> It, it technology is really amazing. Um, the people we have to watch so that they will put like the right link in. <laughs> John, yeah, John, I'm playing. With John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just blame John for everything. It's probably me that messed it up, but I'll blame. We'll blame John. Is that all right, John? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. It's all good. <laughs> well, are you guys are you guys looking good for for more dates and more shows? Then, Sarah, will there be more more shows coming up? Do you think? We are looking at them. Um, my um, what I've been paying attention to is because I always like doing. I do some concerts in small concert halls, yeah. as well as places like the winery. Right. You know, all the city wine, New York and all that. And I was just saying to someone the other day, now those are the places that people like Melba Moore, um, yeah. of course, myself included, Linda Clifford, we found our niche in those places and we still have the ability to do festivals. Yeah, but yeah. where I was saying, I wonder if the larger names now, because yeah. we're thinking about the arenas, what are they going to do to touch their audience? Yeah. So virtually i think there'll be a lot more concerts mm, yep. um that way be, and we find a way to you know donate to charities or keep the money for ourselves <laughs> <laughs> well deserved well deserved i think <laughs> we you know find um because if we do play larger in arenas we may have an advantage simply yeah. because of the space yep. you know the social distancing yeah. Um, we're hoping uh, a couple of us have also decided to be spokespeople for, you know, getting the vaccine Probably. simply because yeah. that will help, you know, the, the, the problem that we're having now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. my agent called me or texted me and it sent me an email a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago and told me what yeah. we were, you know, mm -hmm. we have Birdland dates for Birdland and. There are a few of, of some places in Maryland and, you know, we had to take them off the table. But he was saying that cruises might be a thing. And that now that would frighten me. 
yeah. to be on the cruise. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. Like the water, no. No, excuse me? Do you not like the water, the sea? I love the sea. Yeah. Just don't but like I think the closeness of the yeah. people on the ship would be a little mm. different, you know? As long as the cruise stops by Scotland, Sarah, and you guys can come over to Scotland and sing for us, then we don't mind, do we, John? I, I, you know, I have a good time um, being in Europe. I always like being there around yeah. the Christmas holidays. That is my favorite time yeah. to be there. I love the way you, you, you know, the way they decorate, the way you celebrate. Yep. It's it's not so heavy, heavy. It's joyous, you know? Yeah, yeah, quite traditional, like traditional kind of sense. And you have mangers as opposed to trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, I tried to get John into the Christmas spirit. And <laughs> oh, I didn't want that. <laughs> He's such a grinch. You don't want grinch. it? <laughs> oh, well, you need to come to, to, come to America yeah. and join a family such as mine. Okay, and, so and see all that we do. I come from a large family yep. and uh, there are gifts all over the living room. I mean, there's so many gifts and the trees and then the food. You can sit there. My friends love to be invited to our holiday festival. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm coming. Sarah, I'm coming. <laughs> you've, okay. you've them. I mean, we, we, we cook and, you know, we missed um, Easter's generally at my house. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, there's turkey, hams, chicken, uh, stuff I don't even know what it is. I taste it, you know, because <laughs> we have big. But no, we cook like traditional food, like collard greens and kale we have huge salads fruit salads and everything is freshly made we well, believe in amazing. doing this our own so cooking yeah <laughs> it's really are. good we got it from our mother she's one she was the one <laughs> yeah just talking about but family music. family in that as well Sarah then family I take out a lot of music runs in the family in that then Do you, you have you always been a musical family we well I got it from my mom my mom played piano yeah. Um, had a lovely voice. My father could sing too. They were always singing. Um, of course, I don't know if you read my bio, my father was a Pentecostal pastor. Mm -hmm. So there was always gospel music around, but we'd yeah. go up into my older brother's room where he had all the jazz records and Brilliant. all the rock and roll because uh, the doctrine at that point was like, you don't bring that devil's music in my house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, however... I slipped through <laughs> with the mom, but um, she loved music. And she, even when my dad wouldn't come to see us perform, right. um, he, because of his pastoral beliefs, yeah. he finally came to visit LaBelle at the Metropolitan Opera House. Wow. That was his first concert that he ever saw us in. Wow. And Patty and Nona said, oh, he didn't like those little junky places we were playing. He thought they were beneath him. So he had to come to the <laughs> Metropolitan <laughs> Opera House, you know. But music has always been in the family. There's yeah. always a piano in our home. Um, I think it traces there back was, to gospel, gospel so much. So many of the guests that we have on traces back to gospel music. And it's just such joyous real music i think isn't it there's something just that's for the for the love of the music and it always traces back to gospel music you know the gospel is the root i would say yeah you know it, it's the afrocentric type of rhythms yeah. you know when people get happy in church and that that's why they call pentecostals holy rollers because they would feel the spirit and they would jump to the music you know yeah. and i felt it i felt it on stage yeah. away from the church it's like it's something that comes through you. Yeah. But gospel, it has become, in my uh, opi uh, my opinion, the new R&B. Yep. You know, you have the Kirk Franklins, you have Yolanda Adams, you have, you know, um, Tamara Hall. There's so many people now. And gospel has crossed over into all the different genres of music. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, wow. yeah. yeah. So I take it yeah. it was more the rock and roll and jazz stuff that influenced you then, Sarah, and you just progressed into, we well, just want to be, become a, a singer in a band, basically. How, how did it come about with LaBelle? Uh, you know, prior to um, becoming professional <laughs> as a teenager, I always, I put together a group called the Del Capris. Right. And we had like so many people in the group. We had like five girls and two guys. It was a mini choir, but we, you know, some of the people left my group 
and we became four. And in the meantime, there was Patti LaBelle and her group with Cindy Birdsong. Right. And they were called mm -hmm. the Ordettes. All right. We happened to have the same manager. So when they fought, you know, people were scraggling from my group, straggling away from hers. That's where we had Cindy, Nona, Patty. We came together. They were Philadelphia. We were New Jersey. And people would say, well, if they're from Philadelphia, how in the world did you meet? So, you know, about the New Jersey Turnpike, we said we met in the ladies room in the New Jersey Turnpike and started singing. And that's how we began. We would tell so many fake stories. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, music is um, the thing that really motivated me. Yeah. Um, and different genres of music. Mm -hmm. That's why I can sing jazz. I sing blues. I sing pop. Of course, my history with Keith Richards and the expensive winos. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know yeah. that uh, I've sang on the Rolling Stones Steel Wheel CD. Brilliant. Um, and, well, that and must have been some Keith, incredible, incredible times. Yeah, I've had to, you know, I've sang with Alice Cooper on some of his work. I've sang with, you know, did some backups with the choir for the OJs. Brilliant. And then I I have had the ability to sing at the New Hope, Bright, uh, Bright Hope Church in Philadelphia under the direction of Donald Dumpson, yeah. who uh, I will come out every other year and do a gospel concert with him. Yep. And sometimes yep. I speak at churches and I get to do gospel from the from the pulpit. Yeah. After my, you know, um, seminar, whatever I'm giving. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah. the last appearance that I made was at a church last year on National Women's History Day Brilliant. in 2020. Brilliant. Uh, and um, there's a clip of it somewhere. I'll send you. I'll send you guys. You probably got all the clips, everything, right? <laughs> I mean, always do the research. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. Do, don't tell me you didn't do it. <laughs> we always take it. But, uh, but the winos experience is one of the um, a top uh, joys that I've had yeah. in my life. Um, Lavelle. Yeah, how, how did that come about? Well. I was having, um, I was going to meet a friend of mine who happened to be the president of CBS Records right. for a Christmas drink. And uh, we would all go and meet, you know, different ones of us would always go and talk to different, have drinks with the, the boss, as yeah, so yeah. to speak. And um, I arrived at the appointed time and I get there and um, Walter Yetnikoff's secretary says, um, he's still in a meeting. I said, well, could you buzz him and let him know that I'm here? And so she said, he's in there with Keith Richards. I said, Keith Richards? She said, you know him? I said, yes. So I said, could you please buzz and interrupt the meeting and tell them that I'm out here? And the door breaks wide open and Keith and I run into each other. We haven't seen each other for a long time. He said, I've been looking for you. I, your voice is the one I want. And I'm looking at him going, my voice? He said, yes, I'm doing a solo project and I need your voice. And I'm going, uh, Keith, you know, you're talking to Sarah Dash, not Patty, right? He said, you are the one. Wow. And I go, OK. He said, now this is the thing that sort of I said, mm -hmm, OK. So he says, I'm going to Archer Rios, you know, down to Jamaica yeah. for my Christmas the winter break. And I'm going. Only break I get is when I go home and turn off the phones. You know, but he said, I'm on my way, me and the family. And my manager, you know, Jane Rose, she'll be calling you wow. um, when I get back. And I go, mm, I don't know. Well, he happens to come back early. He got a little bored. Yeah. And at the time that he called me and I sang on that record, Make No Mistake, the duet that I do with him. Yeah, yeah, that's a great track. Yeah, thank you. I had the flu. <laughs> and they called me and, you know, it's like we have, you know, artists, some artists have unscheduled lives. Yeah. They called me about seven o'clock at night and I'm home with the flu. I'm also finishing up my solo project <laughs> and I'm going, I don't know. They said, we'll send the car. You won't have to step out. You know, New York, when you live in New York, the doorman steps out on the curb and he gets the cab for you. Oh, no, no, no. We'll send a car. And they send this big, long, black stretch 
limousine and the doorman's ringing my apartment. He's like, Miss Dash, there's a car out here for you. They say it's for you. And I said, okay. So I get up, I sponge off. I go down there because he said, just come and listen. You don't have to sing. I get I get there and I'm saying, wow, this is a great track. Uh, Willie Mitchell has put the horns yeah. arrangement yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. And he said, we're going back to Memphis to do some more work on it. But, you know, this is that. And I said, so I said, mm. I'll go out to the <laughs> mic. He said, let's see if the, if the key works. And that was a little, you know, a little trick, right? Yeah. Let's see if the key works. I said, give me the lyrics. Um, give me the lyric and give me the melody. Yeah. And I said, oh, I know what this is. I'm not kidding you. I knew the song without really knowing it. Yeah, wow. And I sang it. Right. And and it was done in like a couple of takes. And wow. I went home and, you know, started, got well and started working again on my CD. And then all of a sudden I hear from Jane, there's going to be a tour. Wow. There's going to be press. There's going to be. And I said, well, Jane, I have my CD coming out. She said, this is, you have the best uh, deal right here because yeah. while you're talking about the winos, you can also be talking about Sarah Dash. Ah, <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, so it was perfect. We did. We actually did uh, three CDs, um, and we did world tours. Wow. Um, you know, we went to Brazil, and Brazil it, it still talks about the winos. Yeah, we had a box set that came out in. Uh, November, I believe, this past November. Yeah. And I hear from Steve Jordan, who's the co-producer of the work, the drummer. Yeah. And I got a text from him the other day. He said, um, he said, I, I, I can't remember verbatim, but he says, oh, I'm working on the live session from London that we did. I said, live, he's our live concert. The record label wants you to, us to release live in London, expensive winos in the fall. Oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so it's it, it's a work that keeps repeating itself. Yeah. yeah. And Keith is such a great musician. Yeah. yeah. He what really talent, is. He's talent. insightful. Yep. He's and and as a human being, I've got to know his children. Yep. Um, we did one of the tours that we did. He brought the children over to London. Yeah. And the the little girls, Alexander, they're grown ups now, but they were in the audience. And this was a night that my heel got caught in my, the hem of my skirt. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> so they thought I was doing a special dance. I'm jumping up and down going, help me. I'm doing all this kind of stuff, arms waving, you know, flashing. And the band is just like, I said, my heel. And they knew they weren't going to let me fall, but they loved it. So dance. Alexander, so they finally helped me, you know, because all the while I've been wearing tights and boots. And I said, when I get, this was in Paris, actually. I yeah. said, when I get to Paris, I'm wearing a dress. I'm not wearing any more tights and boots. I'm going to be feminine when I get there. <laughs> so afterwards, there was a journalist that came in to the dressing room and Alexander was there and, and they were interviewing us. And so they looked at her and said, what is, what is your name, little girl? She said, Alexander. And so she she's hopping in the dressing room like I was on stage. She thought it was a dance. And so the journalist says, um, so what are you going to do when you get big out? What are you going to be? I'm going to be black like Sarah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Was that? So, you, I didn't so, started a whole new dance craze as well, Sarah. I'm going to. I need. I need to try this dance. Step out. <laughs> no, you don't. It was frightful. It was frightful. It really was. What, what year was this, Sarah? What time would this have been around then? You were out with Keith Richards on the tour. Uh, 92, that, that long ago, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, you were yeah. probably just born then, right? Well, is this <laughs> the yeah, dance that inspired the about. Macarena? What's that? Is this the dance that inspired the Macarena? <laughs> you Since the ma- <laughs> Did you Shame start on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the Macarena. I, know that. Was a very, I think it was a very European, it was a very European dance, but um, you, you know, John, you might be onto something there. That might, Sarah might actually start the Macarena dance. <laughs> Started a movement. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was a dance I did. that swept, uh, swept Europe, so who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Brilliant. I just think it's, uh, it was a funny night. It was. I, and, and I hope there's some film on it because I would love to see that panic. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a great you story. 
<laughs> yeah. just, I, well, you know, I'm also writing my book, guys. I'm finally right. putting it together. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, the first four chapters are floating to see who's going to pick it up, who's going to, yeah. you know. We need to I hear more, more of these stories. We need to hear more of these stories. <laughs> oh, I have I have wonderful ones. I, I was speaking to I can't say his name, he'll kill me, but a director, famous director right. of note, um, the other day, and he was saying, you know, I love the fact that you girls talking about Patty Nona and Sarah yeah. um have such great um you know, energy around the split up of your group. He says, um, it's not like another group that we all know yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> so, I said, well, I'm writing my book. I said, then there'll be some stories that will be quite surprising. Yeah. Um, and Patty and I spoke and I told her I wasn't going to be, you know, there are some things that stay in the family. What happens in mm -hmm stays in yeah and yeah. i she and she says yeah sarah because you're much more classy than that so i went looking <laughs> through my notes i'm saying uh oh i think this one may Don't have to go but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know being um you know being able to document the stories like you said people want to hear like i just gave told you that story yeah, they yeah. want to hear those little um things and not so much of always you know, they stole from me. Yes, there were people in my life that stole from me. Yeah. Stole from my my whole existence. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've had uh, two marriages, yeah. you know, no children, godmother and auntie to many. Yeah. But music yeah. is the, the line from which it extends. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. I think there's such love for the music again. There seems to be that, that new generation coming through. There's such love and appreciation for the music of the probably the seventies into the eighties and stuff now, and appreciation for what what you guys were making in the seventies and stuff. You know, there was so much phenomenal music. We just can't match it, honestly, Sarah. We try our best. <laughs> we try our best well, to match what you guys were doing in the seventies, but it's uh, it's difficult. That's a great compliment in the sense to know that your records are sampled. Kanye West sampled my record, yeah, one of my songs, and. One of my friends was like, oh, girl, you got it made now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then about six months later, I find that the reason why everyone was so happy for me is that I didn't realize he had sampled one of my songs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're looking at the bank, you know, oh, she must have bank. But, it, um, you know, that's I think it's quite an honor to know that they still have an appreciation for the structure. Yeah. structure yeah. of what we went through and what we did. Now, I will tell you this. I don't know if you've heard Bruno Mars and Anderson Park. Oh, so yeah. phenomenal. Oh, that, that song, oh, that song. Now, is that, is, that encompasses yeah. all of that time, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. As soon as that came on, it was like, wow. Leave the door open is like, to me, yeah. that is going to be the record of the year for the Grammys. Yeah, I love what I Bruno, really Bruno Mars feel. What Bruno Mars does is phenomenal because he uses his position, but he respects the past. There's not a lot of artists that do that. Yes. I, I love that about Bruno Mars. And this is even Yeah, cool. and this I'm, song, what? it's like, I, I guess my neighbors probably thought, is she stuck on stupid over there? Because I played <laughs> that song so long after worship service on Sunday. Yeah. They heard all the preaching and all the gospel music, and then they heard, I will leave the door open. <laughs> yeah, you know. That is phenomenal. Da, 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 da. Yes. I'm glad that, and it, that set the standards again. I think a lot of people hopefully will try and replicate what he's done. It always takes a good big name like that to really shift things in the right direction, and I think it's badly needed it recently. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, to, to hear... Um, substance in our art. Yeah, it's very important mm -hmm. not to dismantle any of the generation behind me yep. that has come because that's their art form and that's their understanding yep. of what art is and how one expresses themselves through music. Yeah, the mo the thing that offended me is the names and the you know I don't think that's education. I think. Not that all music is educational, because you yeah. know Lady Marmalade is talking about a prostitute, the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of educational in a very different way. <laughs> yeah. 
the oldest vocation. And, you know, and to think that the Library of Congress, you know, we've been inducted. Yeah, yeah. That song. That's phenomenal. Was inducted into the Library of Congress on March 24th, just that last month. Incredible. That's so that is going down yes. in history without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when they said, when the guy called me, um, sometimes I don't recognize numbers on my phone. Yeah. So I become Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that might have been so, me calling. <laughs> so, so Rita answers the phone, and there's this wonderful voice on the other side says, I w- really would like to speak with Sarah Dash. Um, I'm calling from the Library of Congress and we have something for her that I think she would be interested in. And Rita takes a swallow and she says, well, I'll tell Miss Dash uh, the moment she comes in, I will speak to her and have her call you back. That's Rita's voice. Yeah. So Classy. So wait, so I know the guy knew it was me. I knew he knew it was me. You know how you can tell me, oh, that's a fake voice. Yeah. So Rita goes, okay, I'll have a call you. And so anyway, I was so excited that I called him from another phone in the house. I have a home office phone. Yeah, yeah. And I have the one that you guys, I told you to text me on. Yeah, yeah. Which you can keep by the way, but don't sell that number here. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> only good vibes, but, only good vibes on here. <laughs> that's, so he says, I said, oh, I said, hi, Carrie. I said, this is Sarah Dash. And he goes, he goes, yes. I said, yes. And, I go, and I'm looking, now I'm looking at the phone that I'm on. I'm going, stupid. You should have called on the Number yeah. he called on. Yeah. yeah, they made more sense. <laughs> so Rita kind of flaked out that day. But yes, but we did, they they were, I got my uh, certificate oh. and they asked us to take a picture of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I went to the studio to take the picture. And the guy was so on, he, it was his first time shooting me, that he left the certificate out of focus. And it's all on me and the thing you can't read. So I have to go back and do another picture. <laughs> and, t- and, you know, he was star tripping, I guess. Yeah. And um, then I get in the car. I'm with my team. We have My team is called Team Dash. And I'm, you know, back home. As I am now. I'm sitting home now. Yeah. And um, I'm looking for my certificate. And I, I'm revealing this for the very first time. I left it in the car. Oh, no. No. <laughs> they found it. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a, an hey, honor to have it as well. And you, you almost blew it. Sarah. You almost blew it. I, and, and so my stylist is blaming the makeup artist. And the makeup artist is blaming the stylist because my makeup artist says everything on the back seat is Sarah's. You know, the, we have like a SUV, so yeah. take everything. He left my coat, um, <laughs> a pair of shoes, um, the certificate, and 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 they're so I'm calling them and they're heading back to New York and I'm going. I don't have anything that belongs to me here, and I want to know why. And you can hear the gibberish going. Oh no! <laughs> but they're good guys. They never I'm, forget anything. Yeah. I think they were excited because we were doing the shoot. We had two other videos to do that day. Yeah. Um, and so there was a lot going on. There was a more lot inspired than ever, Sarah. You seem more inspired than ever right now. <laughs> so you make me and John look like we don't do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the inspiration is important. It's yeah. just where you get it from, you know. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. See, Sarah, see yes. going, going back to some of your solo stuff, I've always been a huge fan. Maybe it's not spoken about a lot, but it's Megatone Records. See, working with Megatone, Megatone was just such a special time when it switched into that 80s kind of high energy kind of disco sound. Yes. And that, what was it like working? Did you work with Sylvester over with Megatone, was it? I did. Sylvester and I did all the backups for Lucky Tonight. You can hear us back there. That's a great you know, if, if you really tune in, you hear him yeah, on Lucky yeah. Tonight. Yeah, it's a great yes. track. I love that. There was some that was a magical time for disco when it switched over into that more driving kind of synthesized drum machines. But what Sylvester and that were doing was was incredible. Yes, you know, I probably would have had a 
CD on um, Megatone, but Patrick got sick, as we know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the beginning of that of the whole series of the guys getting sick and HIV, and yeah. no, and no one knew, or they did not contribute. Our government kind of almost let them down, yeah. you know. Um, Tragic times. And uh, Patrick got very sick. I still have tracks that I will. Um, I need to pull up and and see what I'm going to do with them. Right. Um, that I uh, that Patrick sent me. Right. Um, I did some demos in my little small studio. And um, there are about three more songs that I have. I'm glad you brought that up today. Sarah, we because are, I definitely me will. Me and John are the guys. Me and John are the guys. We release music. Yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay, how can I, what kind of credit can I give you on this record? <laughs> uh, my my co-conspirators, because I might get in trouble for releasing them. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Yeah, but Megatone was very high energy. It was a electronic sound that it yeah. was undeniable when you were on the dance floor and the way the DJs would mix what? and that percussive uh, keyboard and mm. you know Patrick was a genius he was Patrick's he really was he really was the, what, the synthesizers and the stuff the guys were using to, to really change that really changed the game I think that mega megatone records what, what a label that was it was a small uh, label in San Francisco not very large yeah. and it um, you know they had also Jeannie Tracy there um yep. Yeah, and uh, she sang on some of the tracks too that I had. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, Patrick had a way of really pulling, going into the soul of what he was doing. Yeah. You could feel the belief of his stru- of the structure yeah. and, and in which way he pre- arranged and produced. You yeah. knew, you felt it from the core. Yep. Mm-hmm. He really, you know, wasn't someone. Oh, I can. I'll just play around and do this. No, this oh. is what. He invented, yep, and this is what he created, yep. and it had its own box of struck of uh, music in there. It yeah. created uh, that ability that you just wanted to bop, you know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if I put some music, me- yeah. Special. Maybe if I put some of his music on, I could jump off some of these pandemic pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's that driving energy from that music. You can just you can actually just picture the club. You can just picture the clubs even in the music. Could, the whole thing, yes. Yeah. And being a part of that era, Sylvester and I did, uh, you know, clubs together. Yeah. It was some of the most amazing times oh. that I've had as well because, you know, with concerts, you do the sound check at two, come back, show hits at eight, you're yep. done at 9.30. In the clubs, you didn't get up to go to work until one o'clock. You're performing three thirty and four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I know when I would go to the garage, mm-hmm. and we didn't go. We we get dressed, we take a nap, and get up at one o'clock. And when we're coming out, there was a church sort of like down the street, and we're coming out of the club with all these drop, you know, half of a shirt on and <laughs> shorts cut up to here and. You know, sandals and Great our time. makeup smeared from dancing all night. And you could just imagine those church people on Sunday morning just looking at those, <laughs> calling us probably strumpets underneath their voice. They're, you know. I but that's like Paul that every is- Sunday. <laughs> that is like me every Sunday. <laughs> yes. At least you made yeah. it. At least you made it, Sarah. At least you got there. <laughs> Yeah, hello. Well, we at least walk by the church. You know. <laughs> I wave are, you, are you saying you still got like unreleased tracks from that time as well that you still? I do. I have some unreleased tracks. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, and and actually, um, one of the songs I actually turned into a gospel song. Oh, wow. okay, okay. Yeah, it was called "He Saved Me." Mm-hmm. Right. I am so glad I'm having this interview today. <laughs> only good vibes, Sarah. It's only good vibes. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's only good vibes show. We try and keep it nice and laid back and fun, really. It is so much fun with you guys. <laughs> I, I sort of, you know, when you said music, I wanted to put a, you know, not look so bland and, you know, I'm <laughs> sitting in, in my living room and what next to my piano and... Sarah, John, John put on some pants, especially for this interview. You should be honoured. You should be honoured that John actually 
put on some trousers for this interview. <laughs> oh, uh, where? Uh, let me see you. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my, oh, my no, uh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you scare me there. <laughs> there's laid back and then there's Zoom laid back. No, I was, was jogging earlier on, Sarah, so I've still got my jogging clothes on. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I love it. Um, unfortunately, when I'm, because I have one more to do when I'm done with you guys. Yeah. Team Dash always says, you know, it's it's fun to, to be on, you know, to um communicate and be on the level of your interviews but yeah. it's always yeah. i always think that the fans want to see a little more yeah you know yeah. you know hence the red lipstick and the <laughs> you know uh, they want to see a little more and it i think it really does encourage someone mm -hmm. because you never know what you might what, what could be impressive upon mm -hmm. one yeah. spirit you oh, know totally. you know it's um and, and and I always like to see a little more. I'm from the old school, you know, and I'm an OG. And it's, you know, I think you should give a little something, you know. Did you see her earrings? Did you see, you know. Uh, uh, you you so, mentioned earlier on about um, you turned one of the tracks into a gospel track. Was that, did that originally start in a different direction and you took it down the gospel route? Um, I took it in the direction... I, I'll tell you the story. Um, I'm sorry about the fire trucks. Oh, that's okay. No, no problem. Uh, well, edit that um, out. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know I live in real life town, right? <laughs> um, in a real life neighborhood. We'll talk yeah. about that later. <laughs> uh, but I'm actually in the home that I grew up in. I restored it. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. But... Um, now, what were you asking me? Oh, about gospel. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, taking Patrick's song and making yeah. it a gospel song. Mm -hmm. um, I would come back to this house, you know, in my travels. And um, I would always have conversations with my mom. Yep. And mm -hmm. we would talk about um, the church. And because dad was a big deal in the Kojic thing with... Mm -hmm the convocation and all that yep. and he was also the person that you spoke to when there was a problem he was sort of like the district's psychologist he was called the father of the state ah, okay. of new jersey right mm -hmm. and he started like five or six churches here um in the state of new jersey wow. he was the pastor that always went to the churches when there was a problem Right. He would show up unannounced when he heard there was a problem, freak everybody <laughs> out, because mm -hmm. Elder Abraham Dash appeared that day. Yeah. This is, uh oh, there's something going on. The bishop <laughs> sent Elder Dash, you know. <laughs> and so my mom and I were having this conversation. And so dad comes in and he says, um, you know, if people really knew what went on in some of the churches, they wouldn't get saved. Mm -hmm. And so as a joke, I said, you mean I'm saved? He saved me. And I started saying, he saved me. And then I went back to New York and I hear this. Dun, 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 dun. You recognize that? <laughs> he saved me. Dun, 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 dun. He saved me. Dun, 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 dun. He, he, he saved me. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So. Well, that's inspiration. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I just had visions of Larry Levant playing it at the garage, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think just yeah. New York and Philadelphia it was just everything with that. I just what what Larry Levan was doing at the Paradise Garage was just a, another game changing moment for music as well, wasn't it? The DJs pushing that that disco sound. Yeah. I think he was very instrumental in a lot of hits. Yeah, yeah, um, dormant songs that you never heard. You know, like there was this one song, um, "You Can Ring My Bell." Larry was playing that song long before it hit. Yeah, into yeah. the stations. You know, you can ring my bell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then there that. was, um, there were so many, like the Clark sisters. You bought the sunshine. Yep. He is definitely, I feel, the person who was very instrumental in getting that song, yep. and it just let you know how many radio jocks were in that club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I yeah. feel that he he was very um, 
he was responsible for a lot of music that we would have never heard. Yeah. You know, had it not been for his mixing and DJing, yeah. you know. You could argue the case that me and John probably wouldn't be DJing right now if it wasn't for Larry Levan inspiring. Because all the DJs that we were into were all inspired by Larry Levan and we grew up on the next generation of DJs. But he really was the, the spark, I think, wasn't he? He really was. Yeah. He was very, I, I would say, there's one guy, I can't think of his name, oh, uh, Knuckles. Frankie Knuckles, Frankie Frankie Knuckles, yeah. Frankie Knuckles mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, they, um, I mean, they were when they were spinning. You know, that's that's their club. I mean, the garage was Larry's place. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, we would go there and you would have so much fun and just hear music that you would never, never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's it just to know. I mean, like one night Larry, um, re he did a mix of Center Man. Right there in the booth, I was freaking out. Wow. And I forget what he crossed it over with. Right. But, you know, it just so happens that um, Tawika Turner, just this last year, did that remix on Center Man. Right. And it hit the charts, various charts at number one. Yeah. In fact, she just sent me something a couple of weeks ago where it started climbing back up on the charts again to number six, wow. a remix. Wow. I think DJ... Uh, I think you guys as jocks, you have your response. You have a lot of great. Um, you have been very responsible for yeah, people yeah. like mm -hmm. Anita and those people coming out who would never ever had it. Yeah, like you, know? you say, there was so many people waiting to to hear what records he was going to play, and it was pretty much making or breaking yes. records. Me and John have spoke about that with quite a few guests and how much. Uh, oh, wait, I can't them. hear the <laughs> sirens. Hold on, hold on. Have you started a I fire wonder, over there, Sarah? You haven't started a fire, have you? You started a fire. It was. It's your. Your. It's your fault. Oh God! <laughs> and it sounds like more are coming. Hold on. Oh God! Oh, they stopped. It's somewhere near oh, me. It's oh, somewhere God. near me. Um, <laughs> if this was on my phone, I'd run to the front porch and see what's up happening up the block. <laughs> That's Before we kind of wrap things up, so it's an absolute pleasure having you on. But John, I know John likes to ask some kind of random questions. John's always got some kind of funny questions. If you if you're yeah. game for a couple of funny questions to round things off, okay. Hi, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you were to have any six guests at a dinner party from any time at all, alive or dead, who who would it be? Do you think six guests? A, they, did you say a sex guest? <laughs> <laughs> Sex. Uh, which is this Lady Marmalade? <laughs> <laughs> Did, Sex, is that yes. the question he Sex asked the me? <laughs> <laughs> Sex the number. John, what did the you number. say? The number six. Wait a minute, the sirens again. I can't hear. <laughs> okay, ask me know. now. Yeah. Okay. If you could have Sex guess. <laughs> six. Yeah. Uh, you're saying it like you're French. Sex. <laughs> that yeah, must be the Scottish accent, I think. Oh. Isn't it? <laughs> Yes. Um, if I could have six guests at a dinner party, who would they be? That is a difficult that's one. That's your that, question, right? That is the that question, is and that is a, yeah. that's a hard question, John. It could be anybody. You know, I'm, I'm number seven of 13 children. That's a very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> but, You're not allowed um, to invite family? <laughs> um, no, I actually, I would, there would be there are people who have made a difference in my life. Some have gone on. Yep. And um, two of the guests would definitely be my mother and father. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, on the music side, it would be... Um, see, I'm, I'm just so toned in. It's like known and Patty, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, yeah. Keith yeah. Richards. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And I, it, it, Sylvester would definitely be at the table. I need eight people. Can I have eight people? Can, can me and John? You can, can have you, nine. Can me and John? You, you and Jordan definitely. You come for desserts. That's yes. how you know we. Used, that's how we would sneak people into dinner parties. And like and you go to a dinner party and he says, "Oh, darling, I could only invite you and another person." So I would tell my friends, yeah. "Come and," and I would tell my some of my. There were some people I would say. I have some people coming to pick me up. We're going out after the dinner. 
And so they would arrive. And of course, dessert was being served. They got to sit down, <laughs> sit with the heads of people. And we, we were bad back then. We were bad. But um, I would have, um, actually, there are some philosophers that I would have. I mean, okay. I would have, yep. you know. Conversation. Um, hmm? Need some good conversation at the dinner table. I would have definitely have uh, Salvador Dali. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, you know, I met him. He was such a character. Wow. I have some of his work. He gifted known and Patty myself some of his work. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, I there is so many. How, 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 how many? How many seats does she have left, John? As many chairs at the table left? Yes. Have as many as you want. <laughs> it's a long table. <laughs> it was a long table. Um, you know, there. Uh, I like for dinner when I have I invite people to dinner. I would have someone like Sylvester mm, yeah. sitting next to Reverend Ike, sitting next to. <laughs> no, I'm, seriously. That would be and, phenomenal. That would change the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I like that shock value because yep. people will look at your character and assume you to be one way, yep. but yeah. they don't know how, what kind of depth that you have yeah, and absolutely. the morals that you have. The yeah. one thing that I know when I was wearing all those sexy con, uh, you know, costumes, silver bra, you saw all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had to reckon with that. And guess who? Reverend Elder Dash help me. My father, he said, mm -hmm. you got to realize, Sarah, because I would walk places and people, oh, that's the one that wears the silver bra, let's enter on a butt, you know, and you whack them, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you, um, my father told me what you do for a living has nothing to do with you. Yeah. So, I, I figured it out. You know, yes, I'm on the stage, I'm loving this music, but when I come home, I do, you know, I've studied at different universities, you know, mm -hmm. um, I attempted to study, but touring kept me away, so I wasted my money. But computer science, wow. I um, wow. I studied to be a um, practitioner, and I have my certificate to be a chaplain. I'm a chaplain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, different avenues. But so, yet, too many talents here. Mm -hmm. You have so many talents, so many different talents. Inspiration. Well, you know, I'm still that biblical girl mm -hmm. in spite of. The Bible tells us we have 10. Yep. And the one who buries the one mm -hmm. never grows. Yeah. So it's important. If you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I think I want to write a song, write that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you think I, I can produce an, or a, a, a symphony, Go and sit down with someone who might have, who might encourage you yeah. to produce what you want to produce on the level that you're on. Yep. You know, I always say to young artists when they come up and say, what do you think we should do to enhance our lives? Yeah. Get your education. Yep. Learn your craft. Yeah. And what you're passionate about, you never work a day in your life. Yep. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. You know? Oh, it's it's all the in uh, having the ability to work on that type of uh, individual uh, talent that you have. Yeah, yeah. And so that's um, my library in my other home. <clears throat> it was actually a room, yep. of so many books, and people would come in my um, apartment. That was my New York apartment. My New York apartment, and this is long, narrow room. And it's all lined with books, and and they go, wow, whose books are these? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, gee, thanks. Really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know. Those books. But um, <laughs> it's it's you know it's important that you spread your yourself because if you only have one thing that you can do, yep. when that one thing falters, mm -hmm. what what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's great, you know. advice. It's great advice. Sarah, I've got a question for you. Maybe, John, you could cover this one as well. You want to chip in? You don't want you to be feeling left out over there, John. <laughs> Depends uh, what the question is. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if you could relive one experience all over again for the first time, Sarah, and have never experienced it before through your career. What, what experience would you want to relive again for the first time? What that I would want to relive an experience that you've for had the over first time, yeah, all over again for the first time. 
if I could relive anything all over yeah. again, it would be the night of the Metropolitan Opera House. Yeah. That was an amazing thing. It turned the whole direction of performance for everyone. No one will ever, some performers have acknowledged that LaBelle did this. Yep. But, you know, there, along with our management, Vicki Wickham, yep. Ron Delsner, who was the um, promoter, mm-hmm. it changed all of our lives. And then Lady Marmalade became a hit. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. and we performed that song because that night, we got to show not just New York, but America, the world. Yeah. We asked them to wear something silver. They had the most amazing silver outfits. Um, One of my friends who's who's in Congress now says, never tell the story, never mention my name. But (laughs) he couldn't find any any silver fabric. And so he had one of his friends go buy boxes of aluminum foil (laughs) <laughs> that you cook with and make a top out of it. And the next day he had something to do in Albany and people were saying, where were you last night? He was, he had broken out all over <laughs> his neck and he had to be. <laughs> and he said, don't ever tell my, I can't mention his name, but he had his friends put him in the aluminum foil. I mean, there are so many <laughs> stories about there was no silver fabric left in New York. Wow. Um, wow. You know, it was a night that crossed, it bridged the gap. Yeah. Where gay people, straight people, black people, Asians. I mean, it was the community of the world that night. Yep. And that, like I said, that was the first night my father ever saw us yeah. perform. Yeah. And I was... Because it was his first night, he was there with his collar on. Oh, dad, you know, <laughs> he was there with his, his collar on. And so some of my friends were like, oh, there's so-and-so over there. They want to see you. But I was standing with my mother and father and two of my sisters and people were coming over and they would come over. One of my friends came up and said, sister, you pee tonight. I mean, you pee. And she's turning and she's looking and there's my father. And she says, Sarah, you were wonderful. I mean, absolutely stunning. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> you know, but that night <laughs> was an incredible night. And then the night I received my gold record for yeah. Nightbirds. Yeah, wow. At that event. Yeah. You know. That is definitely But to make history. That is and and no there. other group has performed there, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Incredible. God, Sarah, we could talk music with you all night. I could just happily sit here and chat music all night. <laughs> I enjoy, I'm enjoying, as you, you see, I get diarrhea of the mouth. I know how it. <laughs> I've got another random question for you, Sarah, what? if it's okay. 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 Um, have you ever met Richard Pryor at all? And I know you would have been yes. in New York all the time. What, what, was, uh, what was it like with Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor was a My very nice... Yeah, we got to meet him as Patty LaBelle and the Bluebells. We work with him in several different clubs um, mm-hmm. in San Francisco, um, down in L.A. We opened for him uh, and um, he had friends in every city. And yeah. when um, we go to like in San Francisco, we was invited to one of his friend's mother's home mm-hmm. and she cooked ham hocks and all that stuff. And we were like, okay, <laughs> um, this is our meat. Let's go for it. And Richard got on the stage and mocked all of us <laughs> and how we approached eating that kind of food. But he was, he was fun when, you know, when Patty uh, became a solo artist, she too opened for him. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, he had dark humor, but it was so it was like real. It was like yeah, when he talked cool. about yeah. Junior in the traffic and he was so high yeah. and, you know, get out the traffic, Junior, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and just a wonderful, um, my experience with him was wonderful. When I found out that there were other issues, the only thing you could do is pray. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, yeah. that's something that, I mean, look at DMX, he's gone. Yeah. But I'm told, yeah, totally. you know. But DMX, um, a pastor that I know, told me that he had a conversation with her. Mm-hmm. And he said that he had been called to be a preacher. And okay. he was attempting to, to do that. Wow. Okay. Really? Okay. 
You can imagine yes. DMX. DMX would be a great preacher, actually. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you definitely listen to him. Soul saved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but during his concerts, he would um, stop in the middle of it and pray for the audience. He didn't care yeah. where he was. Wow. He, he would always to, do a um, prayer. He used to do prayers on his albums as well. There was like full tracks yes. on his albums that were prayers. Yeah, it was really, really, yes. gifted. really gifted. Sarah, I know you said you, you were going to do one book, but I think you might have to do five books at this rate. I don't think one <laughs> book is going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> one bit. One book. One. Yeah. You, were, you said you were going to write one book. I think you might have to write five or six books. In a series. Oh, uh, in a series. I feel, I, my, my chapters, yeah. I'm going to have a long... <laughs> it's going to be a good book. But you guys, you, I, I'm a storyteller, I am. When I do my motivational speaking, I speak for um, churches, I speak for women's groups, and I also go into um, the juvenile uh, homes. And, you know, and, and my most um, intriguing experience in the juvenile home was I was I was in an accident and I had four years of my life that I couldn't walk. Yeah. Without assistance. Yeah. And um, I went to I so I started speaking more and encouraging people during that time. So mm-hmm. I'm with this cane mm-hmm. and I go into the, the juvenile hall. It's the worst one in America, by the way. It's in San Francisco where they have like three wow. steel doors. You thought you're going to an adult facility because mm-hmm. these kids are really mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. And everyone's like, you shouldn't go. You shouldn't go because they're they're very tricky. Well, anyway, someone says, oh, can we hold your cane? And I said, yes, it's silver, you know. Yeah. It came back with the top screwed off. They thought I had a sword inside. <laughs> well, and they screwed the top of my cane off. <laughs> I, I had the cane for months. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. They took it off. There was no <laughs> sword in there. Yeah, there's no sword in <laughs> Yeah. So, so, you're you're an, an inspiring person, Sarah. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And I hope you'll come back on again at some point and have another chat with us. Yes, when when um yeah, when the music of, of the winos comes back, you know. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll definitely come on. Awesome. Yeah, come on. And uh, maybe with my book or or if you just need someone to fill up your afternoon with some <laughs> giddy stories. Me and John are very yeah. needy. We're very needy and very lonely. <laughs> so you can come on anytime. <laughs> but it's been wonderful. You guys are just very sweet. No, it's been absolutely and, awesome. uh, and we're looking forward to hearing some new music and new ideas as well. Keep doing the keep doing the keep kicking ass, shall we say? Yeah, I'm going to do my best. Um, <laughs> you're going to hear from us, and you're going to know that we're going to be moving alone. And now that I've got my second vaccination, yep. I can actually move about a little more. Yep. So I, I'm getting my first pedicure in over a year on Thursday morning. <laughs> it's it's horrendous. I could tap dance with my feet. <laughs> it's overdue. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. That's a, that's so, a good. But, that's um, a good. A good note to end on. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, the, I know other artists too who would be glad to sit down and chat with you. Yeah, we um, do that, Sarah. If you pass the message on, we're always open to talking. We've had some great names on, and we, me and John just like like to learn about the the music and and trying and encourage and uh, educate the people who are enjoying the music now, the younger generations who are learning about the music. We've got a great following and people that are interested in it. And so, yeah, we'd really appreciate that if there's anyone you know who wants to come on for a chat. Yeah, they, there are some... I've I got a couple friends um, That'd be great. who would probably love to do your show if you want me to turn them on to you. Yeah, of course. Sounds great. Yep, sounds good. You know, like my good friend Jean Conn, she had that song, Don't Let It Go To Your Head. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, please, please make it happen, Sarah. We're always open to supporting people having a chat. And like I say, me and John are just very lonely and needy. So if anyone <laughs> comes on and wants to talk you live to on Zoom. No, no I'm, I, you, you can't convince me that you're needy. You might be lonely, but I don't think you're needy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might have something like that. <laughs> or vice versa, I don't know. But it's been wonderful speaking with you guys. What time is it? It's my cell phone's over here be- buzzing. I think it's time to start the next one. You may want to go and um, check those. May want to go and check those fire engines as well, just in case. You know, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm kind of nosy, so yeah. you know, it's. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to see what's going on. The the neighborhood, you know, you can imagine me being here as a child and now coming back. It's regentrifying again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, went through some bad stages, 
right. now is regentrifying. Um, you know, we we uh, dad, my father was pretty uh, pretty smart, and he left us some things that yep. we, you know that needed to be taken care of. So that's why I kind of wind up back in Trenton, yeah, yeah. Um, to handle yeah. stuff. And um, right now, I'm clearing off of a piece of land that I didn't even know it was mine. Right and uh, perhaps we can. I want to build some kind of uh, studio or arts thing there. So right. I'm going to be right. raising money, and I'll call you guys for a dollar or two. Oh and, yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, um, and and to bring something to the city because we have a lot of artists that came out of here. Yeah. Um, you know, from Cool and the Gang, Instant Funk. Wow. Um, you know, d- different people yep. that have come from the city of Trenton. I developed the course at the College of New Jersey based on the music of Trenton, the history music of Trenton, because wow. Trenton wow. makes music. If you want to, you know, tap into me and two other professors. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, I'm always um Lovely. doing that and they're waiting for me to create and I'm working on another program now for next fall. Yeah. Right. You are a busy, you're a busy girl, Sarah. You make me and John look lazy. <laughs> yeah. No, you know who who made me look like I wasn't working? God rest her soul, my good friend Mary Wilson. Yeah. She was always. I told, I spoke to her daughter the other day, and I told Turkesta, I said, I got, t- I have an office on the third floor in this house. The house is, you know, and um, I got, I got tired of running up and down the steps to the computer. So I bought computer laptops and put them on every floor, right. you know, mm-hmm. including the family room underneath me so that I wouldn't have to run upstairs. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. my desk is my dining room table now. So it's like Turkessa said, Mommy, talking about Mary, yeah. her office was all over the house on Sarah. It's just, it was just too much, you know, but that's, Mary was constantly busy, yeah. you know, always yeah. doing something. She'd sing in a shoebox <laughs> at two and be at a concert hall at eight. She was just, that's who she was, a wonderful spirit. Yeah. I think you're just, you're an inspiring woman, definitely, Sarah. We're, we're feeling very inspired over here. We, we wish you all the best with the, with the arts centre that you're going to start up as well. And we'll be happy to support that and try and maybe raise some funds for you guys and help out. And we'll, we'll spread the word over here, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely. And I, and I would come there. I would come there. Yeah, the Absolutely. Rain, the rain, the rain does stop eventually, doesn't it? Well, it will go off for Sometimes. a couple of days. <laughs> well, I'll just get a bunch of lovely wigs and you know, a nice raincoat, some good boots, umbrella, you know. and a bowl. <laughs> umbrella, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But okay, you guys, it's right, been you, wonderful. I had a wonderful time. Take care, Sarah. We'll speak to you again soon. All right. See you later.